DJI Spark Mavic Pro Phantom 4 Inspire. Which drone should you actually buy and how do you get this epic footage out of these machines? I know this is not a typical cloud tool video, but I get the question quite often, so I quickly wanted to share my last five years, I don't want to share the last five years, but my experience from the last five years for future drone owners. The gear, so the drone itself, the hardware, but also the accessories that you need, the spare batteries, the stats, like how far can it fly and all that stuff. The setup, where to fly, where to start, where to land, especially the topic of permissions. Like what do you actually need if you want to fly a drone? It changed a lot the last years. And number three is then the look. So how do you achieve the cinematic look with a drone? Talking about like the camera settings in the drone, but also about like how do you move your drone and like what types of shots make sense because nobody wants to see five minutes straight of drone footage. People care about the story behind it, how you use it for your movie, if you bring more energy to the movie, but not just nice images. The number one rule for making a movie also applies for drones. The best camera is always the camera you have with you. And most people have their smartphones these days with them. And that's the same for a drone. And I carried my drone everywhere. Weekend vacation to Ibiza, a sailing trip. I flew over water. I had it on a ski trip, even on a float plane. If you don't fly it, it's useless. So that's actually the first thing you should consider. If you are able to plan ahead the shot and where you want to film, and if you do that in a professional way, the Phantom series or even the Inspire series, like these huge ones, are drones to go with. Because especially the Inspire, you can operate with two people. One can operate the camera and the other person can operate the drone. So they can focus on what they can do best. The Phantom is the drone I had before, and I had that as the very first version without a gimbal, so you had very shaky images. But you needed to kind of plan if you can bring your drone because carrying that thing was kind of a commitment, as I said. Then you have on the other side of the spectrum, where did I put it? The DJI Spark. And many people talk about it because it's a very cheap drone. It's like $499 with a remote at $799 or $700, something around that. That's a drone that you can compare to a flying smartphone. Most of the people have their smartphone with them. And as I said, the best camera is the one you have with you. And if you carry the DJI Spark with you because it's just so small, you have a great drone with you. It's an epic drone. It's really, really small. And there are a lot of reviews out there that go in depth, but very quick, very hot plastic that flies there. So it's great of quality. The battery life is pretty short. The camera is not 4K, 1080p, but I make most of my movies in 1080p, which is still fine. Most of the people do because it's like quite intense to edit 4K material. But when DJI came out with the Mavic, I knew that this was a clear buy. The size is insane compared to the larger Phantom drones. And it's not as big as the Spark. The Spark came out afterwards. So like that wasn't a comparison by then. If you compare it to if you compare it to an iPhone, this is an iPhone 7, not a 7 Plus. This is the footprint. So this thing is really small. I just put it in here and still have plenty, plenty of room for the remote control and all the other stuff that you need. The image quality is good enough to color grade afterwards. The cool thing is you have these flipping out arms and they are very, very robust, I have to say. I did a lot with that drone already. I filmed on the mountain, I filmed above water, I filmed with heavy wind, I filmed at night. So I'd say the 4K quality you get out of this guy here and the stabilization from the gimbal is much better than what I heard and saw with the DJI Spark. As I said, different use case. If you want to like carry it everywhere, like a smartphone drone, that's fine. And maybe not as good as the Phantom or Inspire, but definitely good enough for professional, quite professional, Drone photography. I bought three spare batteries. I always did that with my Phantom. One battery will give you like something like 25 to 27 minutes of flight time. I have to say I never use the third battery. I usually use two of them and then I'm done with my shots because as I said, nobody wants to see half an hour of drone footage. At least nobody I know. One thing, I personally never fly without a remote. The Spark, you can fly without a remote, but the remote will give you more distance for your drone. What is my recommendation now? How much money do you have to spend? Which drone should you go with? I would say if you're a beginner and you just want to get started and test your first drone, the Spark, the new one, is definitely a thing worth to try because the image quality is good, the stabilization maybe not, but I mean, you have to learn anyhow to fly these things. And for very short, quick shots, that maybe could be enough. 
The Mavic is definitely more dynamic and flying, so you have a broader range of what you can do, but this thing is not a toy. So this is around 1,200 bucks, and I would say you spend 1,500 with additional equipment that you should buy, spare propellers, for example, and then spare batteries so that you have them with you. But then you have a very decent drone to fly with. That would be my personal recommendation if someone would ask me. 10 years ago, these things would have cost like 10 times more. This brings me to the second part. Since anyone can now basically fly a drone and it's so cheap, you have more stupid stuff happening. So when I talk about the setup, I talk about two things. You wanna have a cinematic setup in terms of nice location to film. Not everything is nice to film with a drone. And second, you wanna make sure you're actually allowed to fly or know what you're doing. Rule of thumb is if you want to use your footage commercially, you need to have a license and you need to have a permission. Even with smaller drones for personal use, they changed the legislation within the last years a lot. And as I said, fly away, which means <laughs> this thing, you lose control and then starts hovering away, which never happened on the Mavic with me, but which happened on the Phantom with me, is then a very, very bad thing. Because if, you, if you're not covered by insurance and this thing hovers away, you have this very bad feeling. This is not happening to me right now, is it? If you bring it down very fast, because let's say the police is coming and you grab it here. <laughs> Just give the rule of thumbs here so very obvious don't fly close to airports the mavic already has a detection that you can turn off which you shouldn't do so don't clo fly close to airports meaning at least two kilometers away or even further away i would say don't fly close to hospitals helicopters coming military zones and like police buildings and stuff like that you don't want to fly above cars or highways or stuff like that and you don't want to fly above boats so this is all the stuff you definitely have to avoid which brings me to number three, the look. What I do in the settings, I put them here. I usually use the scene alike, and then I put manually the sharpness down, contrast down, saturation down, white balance on sun. Of course, you use an ISO of 100. You need good light with a drone. You want sunlight, and then you don't want to fly it towards the, the, the sun, except if you like film sunrise like we did the other day. But to have like really, really cool image and a clear image, you want that good lighting, of course, like with every camera with a drone. And the camera is not strong enough for like very, very dark images. So this is what you should keep in mind. You want good light. I made the experience if it's like gray, like today, for example, you don't get the nicest and crisp footage out of it, but that's not because of the drone, that's because of the light. More important to me than just the image quality is the fact that you can either be a good drone pilot or you can be a good cinematographer. Being both in one person is just very difficult. You have to do both. So you have to think of like, can I fly there and how can I film it? So if you have an object and you circle around it, and you use the tilting of the camera as I showed it, it can be a very difficult task to really circle precisely or like to do a dolly with the remote. So that definitely needs a bit of training. You need to make sure that you know what kind of shot do you wanna use for your story to move on. To just have a drone shot is not enough. Do you use it as an establishing shot? So like showing the whole scenery, nice shot but it's definitely enough to have that for two or three or four seconds. You can use the drone for above shots, like this God's eye view that like Quentin Tarantino does a lot. Hero shot, like you standing on the mountain, the drone is flying away or coming back. So the most epic looking shots are the shots that move very, very slow. And as I said, the camera here, it tilts very fast. I will uh, show that here if you use it with a normal control. So the Mavic has a mode that is called tripod mode, which makes the drone move very, very, very slow so it looks more cinematic. You still need to know what you're doing, but with that, you make sure that you don't have these fast movements that people see, oh, that's a drone. And then you can still also move it very slow if you trained it a little bit. Like, for example, you do the sideways following with a camera, which is a very cool dolly shot, actually, I think. No matter what decision you make, the possibilities with using drones are just insane. These things became so cheap and it's so easy to use them, but still people don't care about the drone shots in the movie. They care about the story in the movie and how you set it up. So make sure you know what you use the drone for and not just have a drone shot for the sake of a drone shot. <laughs> Oh.
all for the shot. But don't be stupid. <laughs>